Hey everybody, how you doing? So, should you learn C++ in 2024? Is it still a viable language? So, the short answer is yes. Should it be the first programming language you learn? Because if you learn C++, some nerds will tell you, then it will make learning other languages easier. Well, the short answer is yes. If you learn C++ first, it will make other languages easier but unfortunately, you're going to have um, a heart attack and a brain aneurysm trying to learn C++ for the first time. If it's your first language, not a good idea. Why? Because there's a lot of complexity in C++. It's very powerful, but with that power comes a lot of complexity. So you're much better off learning an easier to learn language like a Python or a JavaScript, as an example, and then once you learn those two languages, which are much more approachable, then if your heart is set on learning C++ because of the market conditions, or, or rather because C++ allows you to do a certain type of programming, which we'll get into in a second. If your heart is on C++ ultimately, the first language you should learn, though, should be an easier to understand language. You gotta think of it this way. If you wanted to become a professional fighter, C++ is like Mike Tyson or Bruce Lee. Do you want to step into the ring as your first opponent to fight Mike Tyson or Bruce Lee? No, you're going to get destroyed. You want to get in the ring with a cream puff like me or somebody else, somebody who's not nearly as capable as those two guys. Anyway, so back to C++. It's a good language. It has its problems like every other language has its problems, but it also has its uses. But certainly I would never, as somebody who, who's been building uh, courses and curriculum for schools for well over a decade and has been mentoring people for much longer. I would never use C++ as the first language to teach somebody. Whoever tells you that, turn them off, unsubscribe. They don't know anything about teaching code or software development, that's for sure. Again, this is not an attack on C++, it's just the reality of, of the matter that C++ is extremely complex. You don't want to introduce uh, a new concept, the concept of software development programming with one of the most complex languages out there. So C++ is complex, it's hard to work with, partly because it's very, very old. It's, it's almost as old as me, and that's really old. And with that age comes a lot of uh, baggage, a lot of baggage. And they've been cleaning it up, apparently for 2023 they cleaned it up quite a bit, but there's still a lot of baggage. So when you're writing C++ code, you are likely going to be working on a lot of legacy projects. You're going to be working on maybe building uh, game engines, maybe writing software for uh, smaller devices where you need uh, the power of C++. You see, because the nature of C++ is such that um, there's less layers of, of abstraction between C++ and the underlying processor. What does that mean? That means basically C++ is far more efficient at run time. So you use C++ if you need highly performant code. You need fast run time code. Run time means when the code is running. Time of running, right? Run time. So when you have very fast run time code uh, with C++, you can process a lot of information very quickly. It's also great when, conversely, you have a very wimpy CPU, not too much RAM, and you need a highly efficient language to compensate for the fact that you don't have much hardware resources to do your processing. Again, that's one area where C++ comes in handy as well. So you see C++ being used to write the software to run your fridge or something like that, right? Which doesn't have big CPUs. You also see C++ being used to write uh, the core engines for AI, the core engines for gaming systems, and maybe uh, some engines to, to run any type of software that needs to process a lot of data quickly. This, though, is becoming less and less of a factor for C++, uh, well, in software development in general, because A, CPUs are getting much more powerful to begin with, the higher level languages like the JavaScripts, the Java, the C Sharps, the, the Pythons, even though they're far less efficient at runtime than C++, 
processors are so powerful these days, you will not see the difference in speed. So for example, you may write a piece of code that will process something in, let's say, one one hundredth of a second, very fast in C++. But you can write uh, code in Python that will process that same piece of information instead of in one one hundredth of a second, it will do it maybe one tenth of a second, so far slower. But that speed differential is not significant enough for you to want to drop down to C++. Which brings me to the downside of C++. What's the downside of C++? The downside of C++ is that writing C++ is a real pain in the butt. When you're writing C++, there's a lot more code to write. There's a lot more things you have to handle. So there's a lot more prob higher probability of bugs. And it just takes a lot longer to do. So I talked about runtime speed, the speed at, at runtime, the speed at which your code runs. I have another concept that I introduced years ago right time speed. How fast, how quickly can you write a piece of software in the chosen language that you're using? So the trade-off for C++ extremely fast runtime speed is very slow write time speed. You're going to be writing a long time to get something done in C++ relative to Python, relative to Java, relative to C Sharp, relative to JavaScript, and several other languages. That's why these other languages were created. They created C Sharp, they created Java, they created JavaScript, they created, they created all these other higher level languages. When I say higher level, I mean it's further from the CPU. There's more layers of code between JavaScript and the CPU than there is between C++ and the CPU. The CPU is right here, then you got like assembly, then you got C and C++. Up higher, you got Java and C Sharp, and around the same level, you have like JavaScript and Python, PHP and Ruby and Perl and so on. Because you got all these layers between, for example, Python and the CPU, it takes a lot, like the code just runs a lot slower. But the trade-off for that slow code is that you have to write a lot less code in Python, JavaScript and C Sharp and Java versus C++ to get something done. And there's a lot less potential for fatal bugs to occur because the languages themselves will take care of a lot of the plumbing, a lot of the details that you have to do manually with C++. So there you go. To wrap this all up, yes, C++ is still viable today, but understand the type of work you're going to be doing with C++, which we discussed, and understand when you're writing C++ code, it's a different game than if you're writing Python code or JavaScript code. One is not necessarily better or worse than the other, it's just different. So you have to decide where you're going to go. That all said, there are now new competitors to C++ that are out there. Well, first, all the higher level languages are competitors. As I said, JavaScript, Python, PHP, etc., etc., and so on. They're competitors because, uh, again, processors are so powerful these days, RAM is so powerful these days and fast, that the speed differential, the speed advantage with C++ often doesn't manifest in real, real, real world use. But in terms of high performance code, you have new languages like Rust, like Go, that are highly specialized and they can compete in some circumstances with C++ in terms of speed. That's another story. If you found this video useful, let me know. My, I'm Uncle Steph. I'm the world's oldest nerd on YouTube, apparently. And uh, yeah, I'm teaching you about C++ on the beach. No better place to learn about C++. Thanks for watching the video. Bye-bye.